Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Anime Ramble. Today I got for you Shoujin X Chapter 1. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But let's get into this discussion because this is going to be a talk about what's to expect from a series like this. Who are the main characters? Who are our protagonists? Who are the villains? What's the power system? What's the setting? What's the world like? What's the plot like? Now, the two main characters that we're introduced to are Azuma Hagashi and Tokyo Kurahara. All right, both are age 16. One is talented the other isn't pretty straightforward now azuma he is the shonen badass who has racked up a resume of winning multiple fighting tournaments even at the age of 16 and he puts on a show throughout this entire chapter i think what's interesting about azuma is that he has a range of emotions right his switch quickly and that's probably in large part due to the fact he has this sporadic he has a lot of sporadic scenes in chapter one so tokyo on the other hand he's trash compared to azuma and chapter one does a great job with picking at this man the entire chapter which leads up to him and Azuma making that pact to always being by each other's side but they haven't fully flushed out what it is that I'm trying to say regardless I find the two characters that were introduced to interesting enough to continue the series and to see what else this has to offer leading up in world building and character development so the power system we don't know <laughs> but we do manage to get two main things about the power system of this series the first being in the name of this series, right? A shoujin. I've never heard the term before, but that was nothing but a quick Google search away. I saw that the word was uh, very synonymous with superhuman and super powered, but because of like accent marks and translations, I also saw a lot of things pop up that translated to decay. We get a glimpse as to what might be the actual power system, right? So pages seven to 11, this flame shoujin blows up a plane in the middle of the sky. The second part of the power system is some shit out of like My Hero Vigilante. So if you go to page 27, this unknown man pulls out a pocket full of needles, which we're later find out has the ability to transform people into shoujin or allow them to obtain the ability of a shoujin. But that's pretty much it because we don't really get a whole lot regarding the world or the power system. It's really the characters, right? The characters really grip you in into the chapter with just how much we get from them. Tokyo is a second year in high school and he really doesn't like school too much. He's just going through the motions and you get this feeling like he doesn't like anything. But then as you keep reading, you find out that he really does have a sense of justice he's just trash at fighting and helping people he's always the guy who was picked on and bullied as a child and this leads him to meeting azuma who really is the man that tokyo is aspiring to be he has this strong sense of justice this strong sense to do good he's a complete badass i mean the very first time we meet azuma he jumps in and decimates these 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 uh, these thugs that were picking on this kid breaks their arms entirely sends them crying so after he kicks and breaks the dude's arms, that leads into the rest of the chapter unfolding. That leads into us following the bad guys of chapter one back to their hideout and seeing that he has his arm bandages up and there's nothing that he can do, right? He's in full arm casts. And it's funny, it's funny, but it's also sad at the same time, but in pops this mysterious dude and he gives them these vials, right? And these vials give them the ability of a shoujin. And so he injects himself and now they're on the hunt back for Azuma in Tokyo, but they neither of them know this so this leads all the way to the end of the chapter and if i could just say this has to be one of the most interesting origin stories that two protagonists have had in a long ass time okay complete badass moment i tip my hat i don't have a hat i i i tighten my do-rag for tokyo for for just having the balls right this chapter review is all over the place but i mean it's really not a review this is a discussion so back to the discussion Tokyo, after everything happens, right, because they go, the bad guys, they find him, they're fighting Azuma again. Tokyo, he's standing on the sideline like a bitch, and Azuma is really handling this entire ordeal that's going on. Well, it's not as easy as last time, because now the bad guy, the villain, I forget his name, I don't even think we know his name, he's just fodder for real, for real, he's, he's just a plot device. But because he took what was in the syringe, he now has the fucking ability of Luffy and can stretch his body all over the goddamn place but this is the problem with taking the syringe he can't control it all that well so actually during the fight he came with some of his friends right some of his thugs he ends up killing them he ends up squashing them because of how much pressure he's he's giving off now when all of this is happening you gotta think azuma and tokyo they're just humans right these are regular humans these aren't super powered naruto double reinforced humans that can go through a mountain no these are just regular kometsu no yaiba they in a fucked up situation humans they not regenerate okay so when they get it knocked around it's really fucking them up and
and at the height of this entire chapter, they manage to run away. They find some extra vials and Tokyo picks one up after Azuma's like, okay, I'm gonna need to take a vial. But Tokyo's like, why would you do that, right? Because it's stupid. You don't know what's, how it's gonna affect you. You don't even know if you're actually gonna get the ability to begin with. But something in between happens and they pause, but Tokyo, he still goes and he picks one up. And he's like, I don't think I can be friends with you if I continue living like this. And Azuma looks at him and he's like, you know what, I respect that shit. And they stand up and they were like, we're gonna do this shit together. He says if he doesn't do something now, then he doesn't think that he can still remain friends with him. What fucking self-awareness of a main protagonist you could better ask for? A main protagonist that knows he's shit that wants to do better and i know that sounds like a lot of main protagonists but for real no okay because if 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 he gets a show oh i'm sorry again let's get back to it kind of review okay they both inject themselves with the shoujin elixir let's call it that the shoujin elixir he injects himself they both inject themselves but you don't see what happens to azuma you see tokyo come out the fucking word works handle the fucking bandit call it a day now tell me how this shit works Okay, we don't know what the drawbacks or side effects of taking this drug will have on them in the long term or even if it's working right right now. I mean, yeah, he handled him, but is he in control? Is he in control of his body? Where is Azuma? Is he dead? We did not see him. This is very reminiscent if you are fans of One Piece of the artificial devil fruits that are currently circulating all through Kaido's ranks. Now, the artificial devil fruits have a percentage to give you the ability, a random ability of whatever animal. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know how it works. Actually, you might not know. So an artificial devil fruit, if eaten, has the ability to uh, transform you into a certain animal. Now, it can work or it can not work and fuck you up and transform you partly and you're stuck like that forever or it can not work and now you're just a laughing mess and can't show any emotion other than laughter. We aren't gonna see like extremes like that but it might be, oh, it works or you die or you're taken over and possessed type of situation for this series. It was a lot. It was a lot, you know, Tokyo, he had a very hard life, okay? He was bullied, he was talked bad about, he was kind of a weird dude, but I mean, that's not anything to be bullied about, right? He, a lot of the times he just wanted to be left to himself in some instances, but then you have other instances when he wants to be a hero and do, and do good and be like Azuma, but he can't because he doesn't know anything, he doesn't have anything. Well, all that has just fucking changed, okay? And in the fucking hardest way possible, because now, in my opinion, if he's now overpowered, well, fuck it, he rolled the dice, right? He bet it all on black. He spun the barrel, okay? And he he came out on top, all right? We're going to learn about Azuma, but I, it wasn't just something gifted to him, right? There's no problem with that, but this was just a very reckless way. I don't think... I can't remember the last time a main protagonist obtained a power of a shonen, okay? Of a shonen in such a reckless manner. I fucking loved it. This is a great chapter. This is going to be a great series. Hopefully, it's a great series. Hopefully, it doesn't get axed like my, my series Phantom Seer. I love that series, and I was like, it was doing good. It didn't seem like it was bad, in my opinion. Reminded me a lot of Shaman King, and then next thing you know, axe. So, hopefully, this one sticks around, and, uh... I'm not going to drag this video out any longer than what it needs to be. If you made it to the end, thank you. If you are new, go plus ultra and smash that subscribe button. Let me know you rock with the content that I put out on the channel. Like the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Comment on the video your thoughts. Subscribe if you are brand new. And like always, and until next time, I'm out.